Hey everybody, it's Jorik. Welcome back to Portugal and Beyond. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe for more information about Portugal and European travel and travel news. If you are a current subscriber, welcome back and thank you as always for checking things out. Today I want to talk about the airports on mainland Portugal, the main international airports. There's three of them, Porto, Lisbon, and Faro. Give you some of the pros and cons because a number of you have asked for, I'll say my experience or how I would review these airports in a number of areas. And as we're getting back to travel, as we are all being able to travel more, as things are opening up or loosening up, depending on how you look at that, I want to go through and give you what I hope is somewhat fair and balanced uh, opinions of these places. And most importantly, though, is I would like you to comment. So if you have a completely different experience, if you had a heavenly experience or a nightmarish experience at any of these airports, please put it in there because it will help full, fill in the gaps for many of us that are going to and from Portugal. And you may have a more timely experience than what I have when it comes to coming in or leaving these airports. So let's get to it. The first airport I want to talk about is Porto. So it's in the north of Portugal. And let's go through some of the pros as I see them in Porto. So first things first, it seems to show up for being a smaller sized airport. It's not as big as Lisbon's airport. It gets a lot of awards. And I'll say the general customer experience at Porto seems to be good, meaning uh, the, the lines aren't as long, you get through things, um, they have some uh, nice amenities there when it comes to restaurants and stuff. Getting in and out of the airport seems to be easy. So the overall customer satisfaction at Porto when you're using that airport to get in and out of Portugal seems to be pretty favorable by people that are reviewing and commenting on it. Also, it has a really good track record of on-time departures and arrivals. So. If your flight's leaving at 7.25, there's a good chance you've left the gate and you are on the runway or you are leaving by 7.25. Uh, so that's a really good thing, especially because Porto, I'll, I'll go to some of the cons, you, you need to leave or get to Porto on time. So it's good that they seem to have a, a good track record there for that. The passport control lines, and I'm going to say this Pre-COVID, during COVID, and post-COVID world, the non-EU passport holders, it's 30 minutes to an hour uh, to get through the line if you're coming from outside the EU. Of course, if you realize if you're inside the EU, you don't have to go through passport control. And then also, if you have an EU passport, it's a breeze. It's 10 to 15 minutes depending. It could be five minutes. It might be 20 minutes. But for the most part, Friends of ours that have flown on flights and they have an EU passport, they get through passport control quicker uh, than we do, which I think can be expected. The security lines for departing flights, also, you get through this. It's a breeze. It's pretty quick. 10 to 15 minutes, you can get through and get to your gate or have something to eat or drink before you're on your flight. So those, as I see it, are the pros of flying in and out of Porto. Let's get to the cons because I think there are some uh, some limitations at the airport. So the first one uh, is less destination options. So less places to go and I'm going to say less direct flights. Now if you don't need to go to certain areas then that is not a con for you and it's a non-factor. But if you are traveling to many European destinations or non-European destinations, oftentimes you're going to have to route through Lisbon as it is the main airport and hub for the country. So that may not be a problem for you. It may be. For me and for us, we fly often and we travel often, so we try to... We're in Lisbon, so we just have more options for direct flights uh, to get to where we need to go as opposed to having to route through different airports. But that may not be an issue for you 
But I want to throw that up there as a con because it can throw it can be that for some. And then, as I mentioned, you have a lot of routes that go through Lisbon. So Porto, as much as it's an international airport, it's much a feeder airport to Lisbon to get to main destinations. And then the this is odd. This has not been our experience, but we see this on the travel reviews and the travel magazines that have awarded Porto as one of the best airports. It gets the travel awards, but for some reason there's baggage issues. So when it gets knocked down, it may have a gold star in, in many areas, but the one area where it seems to get knocked is baggage claim, lost baggage, uh, or baggage delays when you're, you may be waiting an hour after your flight to get luggage. We do not fly, we only fly with carry-ons, so we don't have an experience that's negative in this respect. But I just wanted to give this to you that this is something that shows up uh, when you're reading travel magazines and seeing that Porto is the best. Just want to let you know that this is one of the cons that come up in those reviews. So next airport that I want to get to is Faro. I'm going to hit Lisbon last because there's more, I think, pro and con to go through more meat. Faro, so that is the entry point into the Algarve and it's in the eastern, southeastern part of Portugal. And the pros for Faro Airport, uh, if you are coming from the UK, it is a main holiday spot for people from the UK. There are many direct flights, so that's a fantastic thing. So if you're coming from the UK or if you if Faro or the Algarve is your destination and you're not from the UK, but you want to route through, you may want to route through the UK to get there as opposed to, let's say, going through Lisbon. Passport control, if you're getting there from a non-EU passport perspective, so us, we have American, US passports, 30 to 60 minutes, generally speaking, it was a little longer during the pandemic. They just didn't have as many workers working, so it took a little longer to get through. But it seems that it's more that 30 to 45 minutes right now, and I'm speaking spring of 2022. If it's a non-EU passport, generally 15 minutes. Uh, even if all of the passengers getting off are, have uh, UK passports, they seem to process people. They're, they're used to processing a lot of UK passports. So I think they're really good at getting people in and into the country, uh, so to speak. Security lines are often a breeze too. We, we've flown three times out of Faro and getting the passport, uh, get, or excuse me, getting through security, pulling things out, getting through, it's been very easy, even when it seems like uh, the line is packed where there are several rows that you're snaking through, it seems to go very quickly. So that's very much positives for Faro. Let's get to the cons. Similar to Porto, Faro has limited direct flights uh, to EU and non-EU places. Of course, what I mentioned prior, except for the UK, they have lots of destinations that are direct flights there. But if you're going uh, back to the United States uh, from Faro, most likely you're going to have to route through Lisbon or even Porto to get there. If you're going to go to other uh, EU countries, most likely you're going to be routing through other airports to get to your main destination. So if you have a destination that you don't need to route through any other airport, it's a direct flight from Faro, more power to you. Uh, this is not a con. Delayed flights. It seems like that is a common experience. Our flights that we've had from there, all of them, um, all, all of them, all three, <laughs> so it's not a big sample size, uh, all three were delayed. And it seems like in reading comments on other videos or other travel bloggers, it seems like that's a common thing there. I'm not sure why. It's a small airport. They don't have a lot of flights uh, going in and out, but uh, just want to make sure that you're aware of that. And then long lines of ticketing. Uh, we found in two of our experiences, we had to actually, we were not able to get an online boarding pass. We had to wait. And even though we didn't have luggage, we had nothing to check. We had to wait through the line and it took about an hour and a half each time to go through that. So that was a little bit uh, 
time consuming. So just to be aware, you will have long lines uh, if you were checking luggage. So I always say try to avoid uh, checking luggage at all possible. If you have to do something with your ticket, you're kind of stuck. You have to wait through that queue to get uh, your ticket changed or updated or upgraded, however it need be. So those are the cons at Faro. So let's get to the last airport on the mainland, uh, which is the major airport, Lisbon. And it's the one that we have the most experience with because we've probably had close to 30 flights in and 30 flights out of Lisbon. So the pros, it has the most amount of flight options for those of you coming to and from the EU and outside the EU. So as it is the main airport, it just has the most options and the most amount of direct flights. Sometimes direct flights don't mean anything to you. We, when we can, we prefer to have a direct flight just because if you're connecting, that just eats up travel time. Uh, but sometimes it, it makes sense to connect. Passport control for EU passports. So for people that have and hold an EU passport, 30 minutes on average, that's sometimes the worst case scenario. And I'm also including when CEF, which is the agency that handles passport control, goes on strike. We've experienced that. It was no more than 30 minute wait for people with EU passports uh, during those time frames because they go on strike a few times a year. Security lines, I will say, go quickly. And this is either pre, current or post pandemic period. Even though you get through, you have to check your boarding pass, then you get up to the security area and going, whew, this is going to take a long time because you're like, say, eight or nine rows snaked back from the security area where they're doing the, the bag checks and whatnot. You're thinking it's going to take an hour. It goes very quickly. So I will say that their process compared to many other airports is really good when it comes through getting through security. So that's definitely a pro. And then I also think getting in and out of the airport, Uber, taxi, your rental car drop off, they have a, a metro, a subway that uh, dumps out right at the airport, uh, the arrival uh, entrance. That is fantastic. I think they, they do a really good job for it being a major airport in Europe, uh, major the biggest airport in Portugal, getting in and out uh, is a breeze, which is fantastic, which is a little odd because I'm now gonna go through the Lisbon Airport cons as I see them. So I will say in general, uh, the airport needs to be expanded and because of a variety of issues. They just can't handle uh, the amount of, I think, traffic that's coming in. So there are talks, I believe that there might be a secondary airport uh, in the south of Lisbon that will be coming online maybe in the next five to seven years, maybe. I don't know if they can technically add another runway to the current airport or add many more gates, but the airport, you just feel we just flew back last week, so a week before uh, or a week after I'm making this video from Spain. And you just got the feeling that we're back at full capacity, even though we're out of the pandemic for the most part, you, it, every shop was full, every restaurant had a long queue, all the seats were taken. So before you had every other seat because of uh, social distancing. Well, now all those stickers are gone, you can sit anywhere. And we had an early flight out, all the seats were taken at seven at six thirty in the morning, as well as uh, coming back. The place just was packed, so that's a good thing. It means that people are traveling, but it almost seems like it's at capacity, and we're not fully into the travel main tourist season just yet. So, you'll I, I think if you experience Lisbon Airport, you'll kind of understand where I'm going with. It just needs expansion in many areas. So we'll see what happens with that. Passport control. So if you are a non-EU passport holder, which we are, we have a US passport, it takes two to four hours to get through this passport control. Four hours if CEF's on strike, 
which they do a few times a year. So they only, uh, I think they have 15 windows or 16 windows open. They'll only put one or two windows, people in one or two windows. So it takes forever, but in the best of circumstances. So right now, if you're coming, if you're flying into Lisbon from a non-EU destination, so you do have to go through passport control, it's gonna be about two hours. And that's coming from people that have just flown in in the last week or two. So there's no CEF strikes, nothing out of the ordinary. That just seems to be the general time frame. So that can be a little frustrating. So as a note, go to the bathroom on the plane or try to go to the bathroom before you get in the passport control area because you might be waiting a long line, a long time to be able to get into the country, if you will. So the other thing with that, <laughs> And this is, this is a funny story, but this is not a funny story. Funny, not funny. We have flown into Madrid twice. So we flew from the U.S. an hour past Lisbon, flew into Madrid, went through passport control there to enter Europe. Got a connecting flight. It was a quick, both times it's been the same thing. It's about a 45 minute. So you got to make sure we get through passport control and get back on a plane to get to Lisbon. So we've flown, gone through that process, flown back, which is an hour uh, to get back to Lisbon. And we've actually waited outside Lisbon's airport while people that were flying on a different flight from ours, but coming from the US were still waiting in passport control. We both left around the same time from the US we They arrived in Lisbon an hour earlier than us because it took us an hour to fly over to Madrid, go through everything, wait 45 minutes, then get on a flight. So we had about three hours of extra flight or wait time than they did. And we beat them, <laughs> if you will, uh, getting getting out of Lisbon's airport. So it can be a nightmare. And I can just say it's probably the most frustrating thing that you're going to experience if you're coming into Lisbon. So if you have a non-EU passport, just take a deep breath, relax, maybe have a drink on the plane uh, and just realize that uh, it, it's a it's a pain uh, in the backside. It's a, There's no way around it. And then flight delays are common. I think just because it's a busy airport, they don't have as um, many runways as needed. And again, it, it, because of this expansion, only so many planes can take off and so many planes can land and get in queues. So because of that, you're just uh, often with delays. There's long lines at ticketing. So getting your luggage uh, checked, taking in, uh, changing tickets, things of that nature. I really, if you can at all avoid that process, if you can do things with online, don't uh, get in a line unless you absolutely positively have to. Also, and lastly, the airport, because it needs expansion, dozens of flights with TAP Air, which is the main airline in Portugal, EasyJet, Ryanair, as well as many other airlines, you have to take a shuttle, so you you know the, you you go to your gate, they scan everything, and then you walk uh, and get onto a bus, and then the bus will shuttle you out to the airplane, and then you have to walk up the ramp to get on the airplane. Not a big deal for us uh, in in Europe. That's common. That's a very common experience. But if you happen to be disabled, uh, that can be a, very much a challenge. So if you happen to use a wheelchair. Uh, a walker, you have uh, trouble uh, walking and things like that. It can be very harrowing getting onto and off a plane because of the shuttles. I call that a con uh, and it's specific to just a few people uh, that uh, people that would be disabled uh, that I think that in, in those cases, it's a difficult and, and unfortunately, Lisbon, as it continues to grow as a tourist market, as Portugal grows as a tourist market, there's gonna be more of these flights that you have to shuttle to. So most people are not gonna have any issue and not gonna look at it as a con, but I think if you have a particular disability, you may look at it as a con. It's just more difficult to get on and off a plane. So 
This was a very long video, uh, I know, and I apologize. Thank you for sticking with me through the full video. I try to make uh, more succinct ones, but I wanted to go through the pros and cons of the, each of these airports as I see them. Please leave comments. Let me know what you think uh, about the experience and what you've liked or disliked about coming into one of these three so that we can uh, grow the community and get more accurate and timely comments about what it's like to come in and out of these places. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Hey, thanks so much for watching the full video. If you get a chance, and if you're interested in reading some crazy workplace stories, please check out my two books, Magnet of Madness, Volume 1 and Volume 2, both available on Amazon in ebook or soft cover. If you want to make fun of me, there's plenty of stories where you can do that. If you want to make yourself feel better about the job that you're in, It'll make you feel better too. But uh, crazy stuff that happened over 30 years, you won't believe it until you read it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you get a chance, pick up a copy of one of these on Amazon. Thank you so much.